It's time for North America here at the Arena World Championship. This is the final online qualifier for the entirety of the year and the final four North American teams. The move will be featured here today and the other three teams, of course, will be playing at the summer finals. We're going to have Cloud9 eliminated yesterday by the move, meaning that they're looking to play this kind of wrecking ball role in their final tournament of the year. But for M2KC, Method Orange and, of course, the boys, a lot is on the line here in terms of seeding. They just saw Europe play out, so they know who who will be where in terms of the bracket and we will also be revealing that summer finals bracket at the end of the show today so if you're curious which top european teams will be going up against which top north american teams at the very start of the summer finals then do stay tuned for that first we have the move playing up in the series against the boys and i'm very curious what the move is going to play because yesterday we saw them bring out jelly beans on the hunter the triple cool tier and they were having a bit of fun but still playing very well yeah and actually they almost beat cloud nine with that triple <laughs> Tier on Thug Cleave, so that was pretty interesting, and uh, I think we're gonna see classic the move here. Uh, maybe upstairs on the Holy Pod, and I would definitely like to see that, but we'll have to see. I think they're gonna be leading with that Rogue Shadow Priest, though. If I had to guess, I don't think Jelly Beans on that mage is gonna get any more airtime after you know uh, having them fall to some of those. Uh, lesser with Walker DK teams compared to the boys. Oh, oh and we're wrong. <laughs> it's okay. going to be Jelly Beans on the mage. I think this is the first time we've seen Gold Comp since the spring season when Vilay and Fry Kitty played it a little bit. It's definitely not been a meta composition, but we'll have to see how this one plays out. I'm very curious, and I'm actually super happy to see WizK. If they were going to play Jelly Beans on the mage, I'm happy it's not just Rogue Mage Druid. We get to see a fair bit of that <laughs> in the AWC right now. It's going to be that God Comp, the Frost Mage, and the Shadow Priest to go up against the boys in game one. Yeah, I have seen these guys practice this composition online. It is one of the comps that Jelly Beans has been getting a lot of his reps in on that Frost Mage, but I just don't know. I mean, in the past, the Shadow Priest Mage, Frost Mage was really good against Cleaves, but right now I think the Shadow Priest is going to be a little bit too vulnerable, and it takes a long time for the Frost Mage damage to really ramp up, and I feel like WizK is just going to get ran at the entire game, and I'm really not sure Jelly Beans is going to be able to find the counter pressure to slow them down. We already see WizK falling behind, having used that Vampiric Embrace as one of his third, I think his third spell of the game, an important defensive cooldown forced early on. The boys look to keep up the pressure, stun locking three members of the team simultaneously. Greki with that Feral Affinity is also gonna shred in with some extra damage. Defensive Haymaker from WizK on that Shadow Priest. Definitely satisfying as a Shadow Priest to be able to just punch a Death Knight off of your face. I agree. <laughs> That actually looked kind of good. <laughs> it felt kind of good. <laughs> well, we're going to see uh, Maxin. He is not really playing his character for a pretty long time right now. He was in a polymorph, now he's at a full root. But now he is going to connect another root, actually. And he's going to connect now two Jelly Beans on that Frost Mage. And honestly, I don't see the God Comp being too effective until maybe later on in the game. Absolute is going to have to do a great job on this Restoration Druid to keep his mana going. And uh, I would be shocked if the move are able to win this matchup, if I'm being completely honest here. Um, I agree. <laughs> I, think, I think it's going to be tough for them, but you never know. It is the move. They've taken games to deep dampening and won them before. Maybe they'll be able to do it again here. The Frost Mage, instead of Peekaboo on the Rogue, is kind of the main difference. Absurge on the Druid, though, of course, uh, his mana might be a little bit worse than the Shaman in the deep dampening stages. Two minutes in, both teams haven't really been challenged. Chun-Li, we know how good he is survival-wise. We talk about him being, you know, one of the MVPs. I think he's been one of the big reasons why the boys have been so successful, already locking in their BlizzCon spot here in North America. And once again, he's looking to prove it. Big swap over onto Absurge. That's been a lot of trouble. The Leap of Faith is available for WizK if needed, but instead they trade out the Safeguard. Absurge actually looking for some crowd control of his own here. We're going to see the Cyclone coming in onto Gareki. Not too much damage though, as you say, the Frost Mage. Uh, kind of hitting like a noodle in the early stages of the game. The Shadow Priest as well, not really able to do too much. And the two melees just sustaining themselves at this moment in time, getting good pressure onto WizK, trying to potentially force out that dispersion early on. I just don't even know what the win condition here is for the move. I mean, it's really going to take a lot of dampening. I feel like Chun-Li, if he rotates Diffuse, Touch of Karma, as well as his Fortifying Brew, well in the matchup, I don't think he's going to die. And Smexon certainly won't be a target until much later on. And WizK is just getting low. Absurge mana is getting taxed so much. Safeguard procs overlapped with Dispersion. Bit of a mistake there by the move, but 
I, you really can't blame him. The damage from Smexen and Chun-Li has just been so heavy. Absurge, what are you going to do? I mean, his mana's down to around 40%. Not sure he's going to be able to sneak away for a drink, especially with Smexen just having his pet sitting on him. Death Grip coming in from Smexen. Double Leg Sweep from Chun-Li. Wizkate Trinkets out. Grips uh, Absurge out of the line of fire of Chun-Li and Smexen to keep him alive. But still, it just seems like the move there on the back foot. All right, let's see if they can get anything going here. They're desperate. Their blind pick definitely showing it. In the past, the Shadow Priest Mage was a great composition into the melee cleaves, but the New Age melee cleaves with all their self-sufficiency, it's not so effective. Chun-Li, though, in this position is vulnerable, getting Haymakered into midfield. Nice touch of Karma. The move try and shred through it. Icy Veins rolling for Jelly Beans. He's looking to amp up the ante pretty soon here. Ray of Frost available, but now bashed. Greki adding in some extra damage with that Feral Affinity as well, and that's certainly going to be a key factor to their victory later on. Abstridge stunned up, Jellybean sees that, Temporal shields all of the damage and heals himself back to full. WizK trying to set up crowd control onto the whole team for a big push onto Chun-Li, but the main problem with the Shadow Priest Mage is that it's just lacking that sustained pressure, and deeper in dampening, it can just backfire on you because your healing abilities are also reduced. Yeah, and that's the thing. The Shadow Priest could definitely be a bit of a exposed target later on in the game. Uh, Jelly Beans doing what he can here in terms of pressure, spamming out those frost bolts, trying to uh, get through Gorecki to kind of leave that stop position. But he's going to come back with a mana lead, Chun Li Cyclone on his fortifying crew. Nicely done by Absturge. Looking for the re, but Chun Li transcendence away there uh, because there was a gap between those Cyclones. Unfortunately for Absturge, now he's getting swapped to. This fix it's done into the bash, but WizK with a nice mind control here should be able to allow Absturge to stabilize, but still, mana is not looking good for the move here. Dampening just started, and Chun-Li with that Serenity build should be able to force through WizK's uh, cooldowns a little bit later on. Got comp in order to actually win, need to go for those super long extended CC chains with the bash, Ring of Frost, Fear, Silence, Cyclones, you know. Uh, but right now, Absurge in a lot of trouble. Doesn't have his bark skin either. Trades out the Iron Bark, and that was the Serenity of Chun Li getting polymorphed up by Jelly Bean. So good job so far. Yeah, I actually really like the fact that the boys are just going off to Absurge here. They realize the Shadow Priest and the Mage, <laughs> they just can't move their health seemingly. Chun Li's dropping a little bit low at some points, but the spread pressure isn't there. And hence, they could just attack the Druid. Like, why not leave the Shadow Priest to cast a little bit? The split pressure seems good. Chun Li uses Touch of Karma, although it's quite frankly as much offensive as it is defensive, just redirecting a little bit of damage. They can use Diffuse Magic in the same way, redirect those dots to the Shadow Priest and just go for the game that way. Smexen getting caught up in a little bit of crowd control. Nicely done by Jelly Beans, but of course, the Shadow Priest and the Mage, that's one of the other weaknesses in the current meta. The Shadow Priest wants to get dots out, whereas the Mage wants to sheep and peel. So if you're trying to slow down the game, then you're just kind of countering the Shadow Priest's damage. It's a difficult situation to find themselves in. Greki gets caught up in a polymorph, but ultimately there's just very little damage on this composition. Chun Li easily able to stay in the fight, not even considering using his Transcendence. Yeah, Fortifying Brew, he's got the Diffuse Magic he can fall back on as well. Grecki moves in, lands his son onto WizK. Absurge actually using his trinket there. That asphyxiate from Smexen was going to be devastating, and Smexen just seems like he's just going to be going after Absurge. The boys realize they just need to get Absurge out of mana as quickly as possible. Smexen might turn his attention here onto Jelly Beans or WizK to try to slow down some of that incoming damage. And I mean, if the move can hold on with this composition, it could just be a stall based tactics. I mean, eventually the Shadow Freeze Frost Mage damage will be significant. But at this point of the game, it still really isn't. They're going to need 30%, 40% dampening. With the crowd control they have, with some of the defensive cooldowns they can rotate through, maybe they could actually win the game. But I feel like for the move, they really have to hold on for quite some time. And they still got a ways to go. Shadow Priest Mage ended up being their answer for Windwalker Death Knight all along. I feel like that would almost be disheartening for the move because they struggled so much through the summer season to find an answer to it. chun -Li in a bit of trouble here at 15% dampening. Smexen not able to assist, caught in crowd control. Cooldown overlap by the boys, and the move are showing signs of life as they quite literally punch back in game number one. Yeah, um, no comment on that, Sid, but uh, WizK here uh, going to be activating that. Well, his Shadow Form is actually going to be fading right there, so his damage is going to be a little bit lower. Now he goes for the Psychic Horror onto Goreki, but no Polymorph to be found. 
from Jelly Beans, and Absturge was sitting down for a drink there. So we're gonna see if he actually managed to grab any mana or if he was just moving around his stuff. He's sitting down now, but Goreki shuts it down. So Absturge didn't manage to get any mana in that situation. Silence from Whiskey. Unfortunately, came out a little bit too late to stop Goreki from stopping Absturge's drink. Jelly Beans throwing out the polymorphs over on the Smexin, but Chan Li, uh, he is full HP and he's looking good right now, doing a lot of damage to Whiskey. That Zuan Tiger as well, bouncing between Jelly Beans and Whiskey, swapping over on those healing over time effects, swapping over uh, when that Iron Bark was active. So nicely done by Chan Li and the boys trying to min max that situation. And Goreki now uh, looking for a drink, but Jelly Beans does shut that down as well. Half Search getting ripped in into a swap, but actually just CC and Haymaker comes out from Whiskey there. Not going to be doing too much, unfortunately, in this situation. Yeah, I feel like Jelly Bean's done a pretty decent job in this game. He's been getting good Novas, good crowd control, and smacks him, forcing him out of the game. And I mean, that's the thing with these spread pressure comps, right? There's literally no pressure before dampening starts, but as healing starts to build up, they're kind of reducing the healing of all three members. You know, Chun Li's healing himself, Smex is healing himself, uh, and Greki, of course. So the spread pressure will start to add up. We're going to see a little bit more pressure onto the entire team. Good mind controls coming in from Wizke, just denying. Greki hasn't been able to sit down for a drink, and they, suddenly the game is looking a little bit more even here. Jelly Beans, of course, has both his ice blocks. Wizke hasn't really had to trade up too much defense, even on the Shadow Priest that doesn't have much mobility. With the Frost Mage Snares, he seems to be able to stabilize pretty well, and Mana starts to look in their advantage somehow, so the cod comp in deep dampening maybe it actually can win uh, the game. If the move win this, I'll be completely blown away. I actually counted <laughs> them out completely. Yeah, one pick, but this isn't looking too bad. I mean, Chun Li and Smexen have kind of struggled to take down Wiz K so far. Mana looking pretty good for Absurge. Gorecki does have a slight lead, but still, as dampening gets higher and higher, the Shadow Priest Frost Mage damage is going to start really adding up. Chun Li forced into a defensive position. He's behind the pillar, he has to get the Vivifies out. Frozen Orb drops down. He's got the Diffuse Magic and the Touch of Karma he can trade out, but the boys, they're going to have to make a push. At some point, Smexen's not going to be able to sit in the midfield. Jellybeans and Wizk will easily be able to take him down, and right now, the boys, they're on a time limit. They have to make a move. Here's quick. All right, let's see if they can make that move. Absturge has basically no mana, but neither does Karekian. and we're getting to that 30 to 40% dampening mark where Death Knights start to fall over. However, that's also with the Mortal Wounds effect, which isn't going to be brought into the composition of the Mage and the Shadow Priest whatsoever. So it may take even higher dampening for them to overwhelm Smexen as the Death Knight. But certainly, this composition is showing a lot more potential than at first assessed entering the arena. Perhaps Jelly Beans Mage and Whiskey Shadow Priest can outdo the boys. We may have to see Thugonomics tagged in for the next game if the move blind lock this composition. It's a bit unfortunate to see the move trying these different comps so late in the season. I feel like that's been our criticism for all of AWC 2019 is, can the move play more than just the Shadow Priest Rogue and, and the Hunter Rogue? Can they play more than it? And they seemed reluctant to try it, but now they're out of it, so I feel they've got nothing to lose, so they're gonna try it. I'm hoping that when they come back for, for future tournaments that they do prepare more options because it's very important. Obviously, if Rogue Shadow Priest is the best comp in the meta, we're gonna see the move at the top of every tournament. But if it isn't, I want to see them have more diversity, more reach and range in their potential. Certainly, they're capable of it. Yeah, and that was Chun Li's touch of karma. Haymaker from Whiskey is gonna slap Chun Li away. And Chun Li, he is activating his fortifying brew, activating the serenity, looking to reverse the pressure. Whiskey, no dispersion, no trinket for that void shift. Silence comes out onto Goreki. Chun Li forced to retreat. Jelly Beans looking to close. He gets the Ice Nova. There is the Maledict, gets reversed with that reverse harm. Goreki in a full counter spell. Ray of Frost gets channeled out but gets canceled. Uh, I've seen that move happen a few times before, unfortunately, uh, but Absurge gets a big drink in the midst of things. Whiskey has his dispersion back, smacks in, taking a lot of damage, and this is looking like the mover just gonna win this game. I mean, it's starting to look really good for them. Amstage has a good mana bar. I've actually looked at Wizk's character. He's basically built a tank. He's playing full death rows, and he's just going max versatility. Also with the conflict and strife, so he has maximum, you know, whenever he gets stunned, he gets double on that versatility. So he's very, very tanky on that Shadow Priest. That's why he hasn't had to use too many cooldowns. And I mean, these are kind of the mad scientists move. As we say, it's a little bit late in terms of qualification, but suddenly putting on an entertaining show for us here, as they might actually have an answer for the 
Windwalker Death Knight, which would be pretty crazy. Obviously, Rogue Mage is a great answer as well, but short of that, WizK on the Shadow Priest does seem to be winning this one. It's a scary situation, though. He's oh, gonna die this one. Chip, he needs to get chip, the Void Shift off. Chip, is he chip. going to? The Greater Fade, the Void Shift comes in. Smex in a 50% dampening. How is he still alive? I, I mean, he's a Death Knight, and he has a Druid healing him, but I don't think he's gonna be able to survive much longer. And somehow, I can't some halfway, the move end up winning. It's actually insane. The move used to be the most aggressive team we've ever seen, but <laughs> that aggression wasn't working for them, so they have actually become the biggest dampeners we've ever seen. <laughs> and yeah. they actually win this matchup. I really counted them out, but Shadow Priest Mage, I guess if you build your characters durable enough, like you were saying, you can really live until that late game potential and you can end up winning. <laughs> it's, it's quite funny to see the move go from one extreme to the other. Like we're used to seeing this huge playmaking on Peekaboo and now they're just like, what if we just draw out the game forever? <laughs> and they're able to do it. Jelly Beans coming in, Absturge on the Druid. Yesterday we saw them take us to what, 80% dampening here, 50% and they actually beat the boys, DK Windwalker, which has even been beating Rogue Mage in some series. Yeah. The, and not just rogue mage they've been getting farmed by the boys throughout the entire season <laughs> yeah i mean in spring Maybe they should have done this summer, a few weeks ago you, like this is the i feel like this is the same thing we were saying in spring why are we seeing whiskey on this look now like where was he the whole time they had their best performances when they started multi-classing and this entire season jelly beans just chilling on the bench like what are you waiting for jelly beans just re-roll mage clearly you're good enough to beat the boys with it so <laughs> <laughs> i feel like this game was i mean they had the pressure they stalled it out they didn't fall too far behind on mana and then eventually they forced chun Lee off of whiskey that was an opportunity for Absurd to drink once they got that drink uh, in my mind the game was already kind of decided whiskey nearly went down here and that was the scariest moment of the game where he gets stunned, stunned, and then stunned again and almost dies without using Void Shift, which would have been a heartbreaker this moment right here. Legs Look at this. Into Bash, no, into Pet Stun. Oh, if it was Bash into Pet Stun, it actually would have been long enough, I think, to kill Maybe, him. But yeah. uh, Absurd did have Iron Bark up, so you can't really say for sure that he would have died there. Uh, Iron Bark is pretty strong defensive, but uh, smacks in. Going down there as well at the end, he did have his ice bound as well in the end there, so a little bit of a mistake, but Greki was tapped on mana, so it wasn't looking too great for the boys. Yeah, once the void shift went through, it did look like the game was in favor of the move, and honestly, if they had lost, as you say, it would have been a bit heartbreaking for them because it seemed like that was a pretty solid way to win the game. You know, Jelly Beans was kiting, they couldn't get anything from him, he gets the help of the Leap of Faith and all the stuff from the Shadow Priest, and then that really forces you onto the Priest, who is running full versatility. You know, he's probably got 15, 20% damage reduction. When you stun him, he gets even more damage reduction from Conflict and Strife, so, so much defense very intelligent game one from the move but can they blind pick this i'm not sure if they can because there's so much ergonomics for example would be very scary yeah destruction warlock will shut them down really quickly so i feel like for the move at this point they're one of these teams that if they can win a blind pick i really feel like they yeah. can win a series against any of these top teams so winning game number one obviously going to be big for the move their blind pick i am kind of curious about that the boys went to a small map which means i mean doesn't really tell us too much. I feel like for the boys, if they, we see the Shadow Priest Mage, it is going to this be... This is actually a good answer. Sure. I, I feel like this. That, yeah, I think this is really solid coming in from the move, bringing in the Paladin. Gives you a lot of defense, a lot of offensive capabilities too with the extended crowd control chain. So I think the move kind of throwing a curveball right now to the boys. And I think on the smaller map, it really could work. Yeah, no, it certainly could. We see WizK, Peekaboo, and Absturge. Peekaboo, I, I saw a couple of people in the chat teasing that he might be on vacation because Snuts wasn't playing yesterday. He is here, guys. It was just a great blind pick from the move. And they are going to be locking in that Shadow Priest Rogue. Honestly, we've been drawing a lot of parallels between Change My Mind and the move. One of the big differences, of course, is that Change My Mind simply does have the Rogue Mage Druid and has the whole time. So that's why they have qualified through. But in terms of the Shadow Priest Rogue and the God Comp, those are matchups which they'll be watching closely. Fried Kitty and Vilay, they haven't played the God Comp all season long, but if the Rogue Mage does fall down, that could be something they end up picking up. Well, even when the Rogue Mage doesn't fall down, I feel like Vilay just always wants to play God Comp. He yeah. doesn't care if it's meta, he doesn't care if it's good, he just wants to play it, he loves that comp, so definitely 
definitely he's going to be using that as an argument to force his teammates yeah. to practice <laughs> it uh, for sure. So uh, it is interesting. And this is, you know, the comp that we saw from Change My Mind as well. We saw the move run this a little bit as well. And uh, they've had decent success with it. It's a good comp into what the boys run. Uh, it gives you that hand of protection to remove Touch of Karma from uh, Chun Li. So you can kind of kill him very quickly. But more importantly, it uh, just gives you that guaranteed CC chain with Absurge on the Holy Paladin instead of his Shaman. Shaman wants to survive for a long time. His Holy Paladin wants to push in and get those Hammer of Justices, Repentances, or Blinding Lights. And if he uh, can do that, that's going to be great for the move. And on a small map like Hook Point, it's definitely the best place to do it. Yeah, no, it certainly looks that way. And actually, I'm looking at the standings a little bit here. If the boys lose this one, because Method Orange is in the upper bracket, I think they would actually drop do down to the number four seed. So they would have a first round against Method Black, which is a horrible start for the boys. I wouldn't want to deal with really that. You look really happy about that. <laughs> I mean, I'm just happy because I, I just like I like watching these teams suffer a little bit. You know, what? <laughs> so it's been a bit of fun <laughs> to see them like Plays have the these situations. Priest. Yeah, exactly. I'm just startled. happy to see WizK on the Shadow Priest, to be honest. I mean, I think that it, it would be a little bit of a tough situation for the boys. They did have a close series against Method Black, I think, at the Spring Finals, though. I think it actually went 3-1 or 3-2. It was a closely fought thing, but still, I'd rather not have that as my first round. I mean, of course. I mean, like we kind of talked about, <laughs> Method Black has been the most dominant team we've ever seen in the history of WoW. I mean, it really is crazy. So we'll have to see. I mean, the boys going up against Method Black would be a nightmare. That's why they got to start getting these wins. They got to try to take down the move in the series. But I feel like the move actually set themselves up really nicely on this map. The hook point with the Paladin, Shadow Priest, Rogue, they're going to have an opportunity to get lots of crowd control on Gorecki and I think with the Blessing of Protection, they could eventually take down Chun-Li or even make a swap on Gorecki if they really wanted to. If they can get a double fear on Chun-Li and Smexin and do an all-in onto Gorecki with a Kidney Shot into a Hammer of Justice, into a Silence, that's a lot of burst damage potential that they have. Yeah, it's definitely scary. We'll have to see what talent choices the move do go for. We've seen them kind of play both ways, right? With the Mind Bomb, without the Mind Bomb, they could try either strategies. For the boys, I, I still feel like this matchup is pretty decent at worst case, Sid. Yeah, I think it's... I think it's still pretty solid. I want to see if the move do run the Repentance build. We didn't really see... I mean, Poike was running the Repentance build earlier today, but they didn't actually ever get the crowd control chain that you expect from the composition. I want to see the move try that strategy, but actually get the crowd control chain. You need a Night Elf Rogue, too. So, yeah, Night Elf Rogues for the Shadow Melt Sap out of Mind Bomb, Vanish Sap out of Blind, Hammer of Justice, Repentance. This crowd control... This composition packs a lot of crowd control if utilized. So I want to see the move utilize it correctly in the matchup, see how it plays out. If they can't find a kill on Chun-Li while crowd controlling the Druid, then perhaps they need to consider a different option. But I want them to play that strategy all the way through without making mistakes. Yeah, certainly that's what we're going to have to see. And I mean, you do raise an important point that they did have, we did have this matchup literally play out in Europe earlier, right? It was one game that changed my mind played into uh, wildcard gaming. So the move would actually be just kind of proving themselves a little bit here if they're able to win where changed my mind didn't succeed on Dalaran earlier. Yeah, I mean, they're facing different teams, but yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, just, uh, I'm just uh, trying to give them something here, right? Like they're they're providing a little bit of fun for us at the end of at the end of their run here in 2019. Yeah, I, I think this is actually their best comp. Like this is the comp I would want to uh, see from them in the blind uh, on a map like this on the large map. Maybe you can still pick the god comp and kind of go up against Thug. But on a smaller map, for sure, you want to have something a little bit aggressive. Uh, Rogue Shadow Priest Pally, good answer, and. Uh, I mean, it is a winnable matchup for sure. We have seen a lot of teams. Uh, I do believe actually Chain My Mind beat the boys with this comp at Spring. So uh, I, th true. I think um, it's an intelligent pick and Repentance, definitely a big tool for them. Uh, Blinding Light is going to be DRing with, you know, a lot of things that the move have. So uh, I'm wondering more about Whisk's talent choice. He likes to play the Psychic Scream. Uh, like the reduced cooldown on Psychic Scream instead of that Mind Bomb. So I'm not entirely sure what the play is, uh, but um, we know that Chain of Mind, they like to uh, play the Mind Bomb and go for those saps, but Psychic Scream, equally so, is really good if you want to fear the DPS and go after Goreki on that Druid. Yep, we'll have to see which strategy the move do employ. Either way, Peekaboo enters the fray for game two. We didn't see him on the first map that the move won, but on the blind, they're confident locking him in. Will he be able to make plays as we head to hook point? The small map between the boys and the move really could be a... I mean, this game could be on a knife's edge. I really feel like there's going to be a lot of offense from both of them, whereas the move did drag out the last game. This 
one could be over quick. I mean, it really could be, depending on what the move decide to do. We've seen them go for sort of slow-paced strategies in the last couple of cups, but you really can't blame them. The all-out aggression wasn't working. However, I feel like on this map, with this composition into the boys, this is one of those games where we really do want to see those extended crowd control chains, the saps out of the fears, just massive crowd control, lots of aggression. And if they can do that, I feel like they really can't overwhelm the boys. All right, let's see if the move initiate crowd control strategy or if they're going to go for all out aggression, just pure raw damage later into dampening. Certainly could be an option. Do you think that the Paladin can out mana the Restoration Druid later in the game, Zico? Yeah, I think if the game goes on long enough and nobody gets to drink, I think the Paladin would have the edge in that sense, but uh, I'm not sure if the game is going to even go on for that long of a period of time. Bereki getting Hammer of Justice, Peekaboo is playing Night Elf, and there's the Mind Bomb. Peekaboo is sprinting, he's moving for it. I think he's going to go for it. I'm not sure. Uh, silence, actually, so no Vanish Sap at the back of that Mind Bomb right there, but it's still a nice CC chain. He's going to force out the Diffuse Magic from Chun-Li and the uh, barks in uh, the Iron Bark from Goreki. Yep, we'll have to see how this one does play out. Iron Bark comes in, touch of death from Chun-Li. He's trying to get aggressive. He's actually gone back over to the Storm Elf and fire, unsurprisingly, given there's no Frost Mage to snare those images. Whiskey taking a fair chunk of damage. Absturge, I actually really like that. He uses the Aura Mastery there, giving 20% damage reduction for all of that, not trading out something larger. Um, but this has been a pretty promising start from the boys either way. They've got so many cooldowns down already. The Avenging Wrath isn't even topping off Whiskey at this moment in time. Absurge struggling, trying to get some Crowd control, though a nice death grip denies from Smexen. Yeah, the move, they need to try to get something rolling. What can they do? There's a silence right now into Gorecki. Chun Li's got the touch of karma, he's got the fortifying brew, but it's just been Wizk on the back foot. Absurd finally tops him off, but still the pressure's unrelenting. Hammer of Justice on to Gorecki. Peekaboo follows it up with a blind, actually saps his trinket. This is the crowd oh, control we oh. need. Beautifully done by Peekaboo. Garot silence onto Chun Li, but Gorecki gets out of the crowd control. Chun Li's going to be completely fine with that fortifying brew. Iron Bark now going to be available, but they get the trinket out of the way. And keep in mind, although Chun Li does have the touch of karma, guess what? Blessing and protection, Divine Shield removes that touch of karma instantaneously, and that is the type of setup we need to see from the move. One more crowd control chain on Gorecki. Take down Chun Li by using the blessing and protection on his touch of karma, and the move can easily win this game. All right, let's see if the move can execute on it. They'd be moving to match point. They'd potentially be 3 owing a team that owned them basically the entirety of 2019. Perhaps their diversity strategy coming in a little bit too late. Crowd control has been engaged. Is Absurd running the repentance? Doesn't look like it, which is a bit disappointing. I feel like right there was a free opportunity to potentially just win the game, but if Absurd isn't running the repentance or willing to go for it, then they're going to lose out on eight seconds of crowd control. Wizke getting punted back into midfield as he looked like he wanted to push an Alliance A. Gorecki is taking quite a beating at the moment, fading some of the damage, but Absurge needs to recover soon. How is he going to do it? Going for the Holy Light, Smoke Bomb, nice. attempt on Chun-Li. Where's the bop on the Karma? That's what we're waiting to see. Any Magic Zone, it might not be enough. The Gladiator's Maledict absorbing all of the heals. Chun-Li ports out at 10%. After just moving in to close out the game with the Hammer of Justice. Chun Karma protection, gets the bomb, that's it. Go all in for a kill, and they're going to move to match point. Unbelievable, and I'm not going to lie, it's great to see them going out with a bang, but I would have just loved to have seen this sooner. Yeah, where was this team all season, man? The move 2-0 up against the boys. Absolutely incredible stuff here in game two. This looked even more dominating, and this is the style that we expect from the team. This is why everybody loves the move. This is what makes them so great. They play super aggressive, they look for the plays, and they close out the games, you know, very aggressively. Uh, well, not in the game number one, but at least in this game, and this is usually what we see from them. So really nice performance by the move, nice comp selection. They took the map and turned it on its head, and I'm, I'm so confused at what Goreki was actually doing at the end there, because his mana was fine. He was just kind of sitting down behind the pillar for a really long time at some point here. I think he was looking for maybe a restuff. I'm not not sure, uh, but that definitely was the reason to why Chan Li was just falling so far behind. And Chan Li equally so didn't want to trade out his um, uh, his touch of karma because he knew he was just going to get bopped off anyway. So here, Goreki, he dispels the horror, and then here, he's just standing there in cat form, kind of just waiting. This Shout is, him out drinks. He's, what? 
like he, like this is the part I, I don't understand what he's actually doing there uh, but he gets uh, obviously hammer of justice immediately when he comes back off and then of course the touch of karma gone uh, it just feels like that was a really big mistake from Goreki. Yeah, that certainly was a, a monumentous mistake and one that could cost them their place in the tournament. 2-0 to the move. Absolutely incredible stuff. They're looking to be a wrecking ball throughout this tournament. The move are 2-0 up against the boys here. It's Absurge on the Paladin. This is what we wanted to see from them all season long, so it is a bit tragic that they have left it too late to qualify for the Summer Finals, but hey, they could put on a good showing here in the Final Cup, looking to beat the boys, knocking them down, presumably putting them as the fourth seed in North America. It wouldn't be a great position for them to be in, but the move still have to win another game here. In order to achieve that, let's see if they can on Dalaran Sewers. Another small map choice from the boys. Yeah, well, they set up their win condition perfectly in the last game. They managed to get everything from the boys. Trinket from Gorecki, every defensive cooldown from Chun-Li. The only thing he could rely on is that touch of karma, but obviously you can't rely on that against the Holy Paladin. That's why I like this pick from the move so much. They're up 2-0 to zero right now. And I mean, in the past, the boys have just dominated the move over and over. But the move, they look prepared. Their blind pick was a complete surprise to us all. Right now, the boys have a lot of momentum. Wiz K and both Peekaboo are getting down low. Absurd's really struggling in this situation. And he's holding on to the Avenging Wrath to recover for quite some time. But it's difficult to heal on that Holy Paladin without it. I'm almost wondering why after just isn't running the Avenging Crusader. That's a, a talent we see selected often by Holy Paladins. Going for just the normal Avenging Wrath. Smexon getting Haymakered away. Whiskey trying to cast, but interrupted by Chun Li. Chun Li stunned up. The move looking to try and force out an Iron Bark. Maybe make a swap to Gorecki. Absurd, though, in crowd control. And certainly this small map is going to be difficult for the move to navigate around. The boys have continuous momentum. Yeah, they definitely do. I'm actually, I was just looking again at Wizk's build. Like, in, in addition to not everything else, he also has uh, full healing traits once again on. So he's playing around the fact that he knows Absurge on the Paladin might not have the strongest throughput the entire time. Shadow Priest are very vulnerable to just being attacked. So in addition to all that versatility, he has the healing tier three traits. He's playing for the Death Rose, kind of this passive damage. And it's been looking pretty good. Mind Bomb lands on all three members of the boys. Can Peekaboo go for a play? Luke goes for the Vanish, lands the sap. Excellent stuff from Peekaboo as they get aggressive onto Chun-Li. Yeah, Chun-Li on the run. He actually runs into the waterfall, unfortunately, but he does manage to get the transcendence and escape directly on top of him, and Chun-Li will survive. And I feel like as long as Chun-Li plays really, really safe and respects the setup that the move has, if he's just using transcendence to escape as soon as he can, I feel like he definitely can survive. We'll see, though. Uh, if they wait too long, Smexon becomes a vulnerable target also. But in terms of mana, right now, the boys do have a lead. Storm Earth and Fire gets pulled out by Chun Li. Double leg sweep, massive damage on Peekaboo and Wiz K. This could easily be a dispersion, but no. Vampiric Embrace may allow Wiz K to hold on. Is Absurge trying to like save Avenging Wrath for the next game or something, or play on hard mode? He hasn't used Avenging Wrath in some time, and it's costing him a lot of mana and a couple of close calls. Maybe he's saving it to add in some extra damage on an all-in. I'm not entirely sure at this point. He's charging in for crowd control, Hammer of Justice. Good opportunity to make a push. They use, why didn't they use Mind Bomb on Chun? That had to be a mistake. That, that almost certainly had to be a mistake by WizK. I'm almost wondering if he thought he was running Psychic Scream, accidentally Mind Bombing on the damage dealers rather than using Mind Bomb on Gorecki. The move are looking honestly sloppy here in game three. I mean, maybe they were looking for a swap to Greki as well. It's hard to say. Like, you see a couple of judgments coming out on him. Maybe it telegraphs something that they're looking for. No trinket on Greki. Vendetta available. I, I think it definitely could be something. You can see a couple of void, void shadowy spells heading that way. Though they are going for the triple stun. There it is. This is the kidney shot. This is what we were expecting. So they've been trying to set this up for a while. The move going for the kill on Greki, though it's answered very well. As you say, Sid, even though I don't think it was a mispress, I do think it telegraphed exactly what the move wanted to do. And the boys reacted perfectly. Very nice stuff from Smexon. Yeah, I mean, not only Smexon dropped the anti-magic zone, Chun Li rolled over, used reverse harm on Gorecki, spammed out the Vivifies, and there was almost no chance Gorecki was gonna fall in that situation. However, now there's no Trinket, there's no Bark Skin, there's no anti-magic zone, so the move have another opportunity. If they want to try to take down Gorecki, they can get one more nice swap on him. However, Gorecki is out of combat right now. He's trying to recover his mana by sitting down for a drink. 
If he can continue to drink, his man will go nowhere but up. And at this point, the boys, they have a massive lead. Game number three really looks good for them. Yeah, game three looks solid here. Although the move, they can take it to Tolveron and lock in Jelly Beans again if they want to with that Shadow Priest Mage. They won on the Grand. I think on a larger map that they would be fully capable of victory on that composition. This could be the move's run in the final cup. This is the last time that we will see the move in the Arena World Championship Series 2019. So if you're a the move fan, certainly let your presence be known because this is going to be potentially the last time we get to see them. Greki crowd controlled up. Chun-Li still the target. However, disrupting Peekaboo with a grapple weapon, stalling out the attack for now. Diffuse magic traded out to nullify Wizkay's attacks. Abster's a little bit too close and personal to the combat. Wizkay falling behind as Abster's continuously is crowd controlled. Panic attack for the move. Cooldown overlap here. Dispersion and avenging wrath, but it may not matter if they bop off the karma. Where's the bop? They're not gonna go for the bop play? Very surprising to not go for the bop play there. I suppose Ironbark was already active but it seems like it would have been wise with how many cooldowns they already overcommitted. Another Mind Bomb onto Chun-Li. Adrian, are you sure it's not a mispress? Well, I mean, last time they were looking for the swap to Garaki. Here, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, right? Again, Vendetta was available. Maybe they were looking for the swap. I am surprised they didn't go for the bop on um, the bop over on Chun Li's karma there as well. I thought they would go for the all-in kill. Once again, blind comes in, triggered by Gorecki. Vanish cheap shot to follow by Peekaboo. I think on that occasion, I wouldn't have minded him just saving the Vanish. He went for the flashy play, maybe trying to sap the trinket once again, as he did in game two. Though without that Vanish, they don't have it to follow up a mind bomb. Absurge pushing in is using that short hammer of justice talent. So there is a stun, though it is DR from the cheap shot. They still get the mind bomb to follow. Looks like that crowd control broke as well. Kind of interesting strategy. You can see that Peekaboo and Wizke are desperately trying to set up a swap on Gorecki. They're throwing their Azerite spells at him, really trying to set that up. But if they force it too much, he's just going to max range. Maybe it helps them get passive pressure on Chun-Li. He has to put hots on two targets this way, so his mana is starting to wane a little bit here. And Shadow Step Kick by Peekaboo, nicely done. But the bash from Gorecki will slow down any opportunity Peekaboo <laughs> really has. Grapple weapon onto Peekaboo, Chun-Li running away. He realizes he's in a little bit of trouble. Touch Karma up in five seconds for him and the boys should be fine they have a lot of defensive cooldowns they can rotate through now they can continue the aggression on to Wiz K Peekaboo shuts down Chun-Li with a full kidney shot Wiz K looking to get some damage rolling Gorecki in a prime position like you said if they don't have damage on Smexon and Chun-Li Gorecki is really never going to make himself vulnerable so I like the fact that the move they're starting to commit a little bit more onto Smexon and I feel like if the move can hold on for long enough eventually Smexon really does become a great target However, I think it's unlikely with just how much damage Chun-Li and Smexon are putting out that Absurd is going to have enough mana for that strategy to really play into effect. But maybe, I mean, look at this. Hammer just on Gorecki. Smexon's forced to run away. There's big damage here from the move. Yeah, the move looks nice like targets. Beautiful crowd control. Lichborn may not be enough. Glad your safeguard and anti-magic shield going to be fading here shortly as Gorecki is still continuously crowd nice. controlled and the move could close it out. Are they going to 3-0 the boys? This has been a team that's just been tossing them around the entire year and they're going to close it out three to zero in the lower bracket and the move refused to go down without a fight absolutely incredible the move wins 3-0 against the boys that is not what you would expect and moreover that is i mean it's just too late for the move unfortunately since they can't qualify to the summer finals they are having a fantastic performance here though we'll have to see how far they can go m2kc and method orange are probably looking at this i can't tell if they're like happy or unhappy maybe happy the fact that seeding is starting to look better for them but on the flip side unhappy that the move is starting to work their way through this bracket I think Method Orange are quite happy with it because it feels like Method Orange, they're in the upper bracket right now. If they can win their match, they're all of a sudden gonna, you know, be able to overtake the boys. So Method Orange are in a prime position right now. And I gotta say, this is, where has this move been the entire year? Yeah. <laughs> These are the comps that we were asking to see from them. Sure, not Jelly Beans on the mage, but this uh, Rogue Shadow Priest and Holy Pilot in composition, they really looked awesome on it here, and they went after every single target. They went after Chan Lee, they did swaps to Gorecki, but then ultimately, as soon as Dampening started setting in, they started going for Smexin, and I gotta say, this uh, swap to Smexin with that sap from Peekaboo into the Mind Bomb, uh, into the Silence Mind Bomb, sorry, it was a great crowd control chain and the move I, I mean no one really expected them to be playing at this level all of a sudden in the last cup we kind of thought that yeah we're gonna see them on that uh, thug cleave with an outlaw rogue yesterday and you know have some fun with the Kul'Tirans against cloud nine but 
they're making top three right now. Yeah, this movement, this moment definitely does belong to the move. So if you are a fan, let us know in the chat. Obviously, fantastic performance there.